Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I'm showing you how I built this miniature Krusty Krab from the popular show SpongeBob SquarePants. Krusty Krab is one of the most iconic locations in the series and the perfect scene to build a miniature. The roof of this Krusty Krab lifts up so you can see all the details inside. In this project, we're going to use a variety of different crafting techniques and tools, so follow along for the fun. Let's get started. For the main structure of the Krusty Krab, I'm using 1 5th of an inch thick craft foam board. Cut a rectangle piece that's 16 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches for the floor. For the flooring itself, I'm using this iron-on veneer strip. This stuff is really easy to work with and can be cut using scissors. I'm using this compact iron that's also a steamer and so handy for miniature projects. I use it to iron on the veneer. The heat from the iron melts the glue and adheres the veneer in place. I do that across this entire sheet of foam board with every other strip being cut in half. Staggering the veneer like this just helps create the look of realistic floorboards. Once the entire floor is covered, turn it around to the other side and cut off the excess veneer. This is very easy to do with a sharp X-Acto blade. The floor from Spongebob is this green color, so I'll be mixing dark green and yellow to create the perfect shade. The paint that I'm using is a pour paint, which is very watery and will work well as a stain. Once the color is mixed, I simply brush on that green across the entire floor. I like to do this in sections so my floor doesn't warp from too much liquid at once. I love how the grain of the wood still shows through this translucent green. Once that paint is dry, I take a little hand drill and make a few tiny marks at the end of the floorboards. You just need two tiny holes at the end of each floorboard. Once you have that, take a green sharpie and mark all those little drill marks to create the look of nails. Next, we need walls. I cut a sheet of foam board that's 10 and a half inches by 5 and a quarter inches. You need two of these, one for the front and one for the back. For the front, I mark out the area where I want the side windows and a center door. The windows are 4 inches by 3 and a half inches and the door is 4 and a quarter inches by 4 inches. I cut those out with an X-Acto knife. These two walls will be glued to the front and the back of the floorboard. Before we do that, let's add some wood to the front. Just like the floor, I'm covering this piece with iron-on veneer. This doesn't need to look perfect as we'll be adding on additional strips of wood later. I do this for both the front and the back of this front wall. Then just glue it to the floorboard using Eileen's Tacky Glue. To make the back wall a bit thicker and stronger, I add an additional piece of foam board. Then I cut two small strips of foam board and glue them to the side. 
I also cut two lengths of wood that's the same size and glue it to the tops of the sides. This ensures that our building has a strong structure and that the angles are 90 degrees. Next, let's start covering the interior walls. I'll be using this blue construction paper, but you can use any color that you have. I just cut out strips and then cut those strips into squares and rectangles. They don't all need to be the same size as we'll be overlapping them. Let's first cover this back interior wall. I just glue these paper strips on one at a time making sure to overlap each one just a little bit. This texture is meant to look like the metallic sheet with rivets on the edges. I do this across the entire wall. For the wall color, I mix a bit of green with white to create this beautiful light green. I paint that across this entire wall. Before we continue, let me first take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, YouTube's. When I told them I'd be building a Krusty Krab, they sent over these incredible Spongebob figurines. We have Squidward looking bored at work and reading a book. Cockroach enjoying a Krabby Patty. Mr. Krabs who was choking. Patrick holding $3. And of course Spongebob himself who is heading out. These figurines are so well made and the details are so intricate. The paint job also looks amazing with clean lines and the colors are accurate to the TV show. These figurines also feel really durable and they are perfect for my scene. We'll be adding these characters to the Krusty Krab later to complete the scene. Now let's jump back to the tutorial. Krusty Krab has a restaurant and a kitchen, so we need a dividing wall that separates the kitchen from the restaurant. I cut out a 5 inch by 16 inch rectangle of foam board. I first cut out this rounded trapezoid shape because that's where I'll be placing Squidward and his little cashier boats. The boat slides right into this hole so Squidward's back is against the wall. Then I cut out the doors and a window. The door has a rounded top and there are three of them. One on the left and two on the right. Above Squidward, there will be a rectangle window. When cutting foam board, it's absolutely essential to have a really sharp blade for a clean cut. Once this interior wall has all the cutouts, cover it with more of the construction paper pieces. I first cover one entire side and cut off all the excess. Then I cover the other side as well. Cut off the excess. On the side facing the back wall, I paint the entire wall in the same light green color. On the other side, I first mix up some purple and white acrylic paint. Then paint the squares around the cashier window with this light purple. I also paint the areas on the bottom sides. Cut a long strip from more construction paper and glue that across the top of the wall. Paint this top strip an even lighter purple. For the door frame, I first trace the shape of the door on a piece of paper. Then draw a wider outline right around it. Cut that out and you have a basic template for your door frame. I recommend using this template to cut the shape out from thick mat board. You'll need 6 of these for the 3 doors. Now it's time for paint. I just add some blue acrylic paint to my purple mix. Then paint all the frames. Once that's dry, glue these to the door openings. I use the same technique to create a window frame. Flip the wall around and add the door and window frames to the other side as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now we need to clean up the interior of the door frame. I cut out quarter inch strips from more construction paper. Glue this along the interior of each door frame. Then paint that paper in the same bluish purple mix. Look how clean and seamless these doors and windows look. And lastly, I add some rivers around these panels on the walls with Sharpie markers. I use a light blue Sharpie for the blue, a purple Sharpie for the purple panels. For the other side, I use a green Sharpie for all the green panels. Now we're ready to add this interior wall inside our main structure. I add glue to the bottom and sides of this wall and slide it in. Then cut quarter inch strips from more construction paper and glue that to the top of our interior wall for a seamless look. At this point, I need to add two walls inside the back kitchen area. I first cut out a 5 inch by 4 inch rectangle from foam board and cut out a door opening. I cover that in construction paper pieces, paint it, and add on the door frame. I did this using the same steps as our main interior wall. We need two of these small walls. Add these to the back area. The room on the left is Mr. Crab's office, and the room on the right is our bathroom. The center is the kitchen. Next, I grab some dollhouse shingles. They're these thin rectangular panels of wood. They're so easy to work with and perfect for so many craft projects. I glue several of these on the bottom sides of our main front room. Since my shingles weren't tall enough, I added a coffee stirrer to the top. Do this for the exterior of the structure as well. I glue these on with more tacky glue. The shingles add a rustic charm to our crusty crab. I glue on coffee stirrers to the top ledge of this area for a really clean look. I turn the structure to the back and cover the foam with a few sheets of craft wood. These are about 1 16th of an inch thick so they're very thin and easy to cut. Now I'm going along all the sides where the foam board is exposed and covering it up with more coffee stirrers and shingles. This step is the most time consuming but it adds so much character and gets the restaurant ready for our next step. We'll be staining all the wood on this Krusty Krab dark brown, so I first grab some dark brown acrylic paint. Mix it with some water. Then simply brush on that watery mix across all the areas that are covered in wood. This includes all the exterior and interior walls. While that dries, let me show you how to make the interior doors. I grab a cutout from the door frame that we made. Trace that on a piece of paper. Again, I recommend using mat board for this, but I'm showing you on an index card for this video. Cut out the shape of the door. Then cut out a circle in the top center area. This hole doesn't have to be perfect. For the circular window frame, I cut out a circle and then cut out the interior area. Then you just glue this on top of the door right over the hole. Again, this is just an index card, so you need to stack these up for thickness, use thick scrapbook paper, or thick mat board. We need 5 of these in total. I paint these a light purple. Then glue the doors in place. You can leave them open or close. Another option is to attach these with hinges, but I didn't need them to be functional for this scene. Next, we need the famous Krusty Krab Grill. I cut a few rectangles from the foam board. You need one rectangle that's 2.5 inches by 1.5 inches, and a smaller strip that's a half an inch by 2.5 inches. Glue these together at a 90 degree angle for the grill top. Then cut two 1.5 inch squares and glue those to the sides. Add 
add a rectangle to the front area to close it up. This is our basic shape. Then cut some construction paper and wrap it around the front of the grill. I also cover this small top area and along all the edges. I cut a rectangle of construction paper and paint it black. Glue this to the top of the grill. Then cut a quarter inch strip from more construction paper and paint that black. Glue this to the top edge of the grill. Next, I use a hole punch and punch out three small circles from black construction paper. Glue that to the front. Now position the grill in the kitchen right underneath the window. Before we decorate the inside of this restaurant, let's create the rounded top. I cut another piece of foam board that's 16 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. Cut this in half. I stack them up and draw a rounded edge on one side. Cut that out. Here I'm cutting two and a half inches off the bottom because I realized it was way too tall. Now I have my two half circles. These will make up the sides of our rounded top. To get an accurate measurement for our next piece, I first grab a piece of wire and wrap it around the top of the rounded side. This is just to get the length of this rounded edge. Mine was about 17 and a half inches. Once I have that, and make sure to cut a piece of foam that has the same exact length. The width is 16 and a half inches. That means my piece of foam board is 17 and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. Then along the 16 and a half inch width, I begin to score the foam board every half an inch. That just means I cut through most of the foam board but leave the bottom paper intact. Doing this will allow me to bend the foam board without it cracking. I go along each cutout to make sure that it was cut all the way through except for the bottom strip of paper. When done properly, this sheet of foam board can easily be bent into any curved shape. For the top of the Krusty Krab, we're making a curve that looks just like a top of a chest. Glue the edge of this rectangle sheet to the top curved side on one of our half circles. Do the same for the other side. I use a bit of painter's tape to hold all the pieces in place while the glue dries. Once the glue is dry, I can cover the exterior with more wood veneer. Just like we did for the flooring, I simply iron on the veneer. Go all the way around the top of this roof. For the sides, you can use more veneer, but I'll be using these saw house hinges for a rustic look. Again, I just lay down some tacky glue and stack the shingles on one layer after another. Once the glue has dried, I go around all the edges and cut off the excess wood. In a look, I grab some more veneer and iron it to the sides. Then stain all the wood with the same dark brown acrylic paint that we mix with water. For the interior, I first cover the top and sides with construction paper. I also cut a strip of foam board and glue it to the center for stability. Cover that in construction paper as well. 
Then I paint this entire area with the same light green acrylic paint that we use for the interior walls. I add a few craft sticks to the side edges for some strength. Stain those dark brown as well. Lastly, cover all the exposed foam board with more strips of construction paper. Now it's time to add the roof to the main structure. I position this on the top of the main structure and grab some dollhouse hinges. These came with screws, so I make some pilot holes and then tighten in all the screws. Once the hinges are in place, this crusty crab can open and shut easily. We're not done just yet, so let's go in for the exterior details. To create the look of the lobster trap that Krusty Krab is based on, I take some thick thread. Cut several 6 inch sections of this thread and glue it 1 half inches apart on the top of the open sides of the restaurant. Once the glue is dry, pull these towards the back at an angle and glue the bottom areas of the thread in place. Cut several more sections of thread and glue them on in the opposite direction as well. I glue on some dollhouse shingles to the top of the thread area to hold the thread in place and to make it look cleaner. Cut off the excess thread on the bottom and glue shingles to that area as well. Then stain all the shingles to blend them into the structure. For the windows and doors at the front of the restaurant, I'll be using thin clear sheets of polycarbonate. They're just like clear acrylic sheets but are way easier to cut and less likely to crack. I cut a few rectangles for the windows. Glue them into place. Do the same for the door. I glue on a strip of coffee stir in the middle of the door to divide it in half. Also glue on two short sections of more coffee stir for the door handles. There is a poster of a Krabby Patty on the left window, so I found an image online and glued that to the front window. Before we finish the exterior, let's go back inside the restaurant and begin putting in our characters. Squidward in his cashier bowl goes right in the middle of the restaurant. Patrick, who is holding some money, stands right in front of Squidward ready to order his Krabby Patty. Cockroach, who is eating a Krabby Patty, will go on the left side of the restaurant. Mr. Krabs, who is choking but also looks aggravated, will stand in the kitchen. SpongeBob, who is getting up off his couch, will go into Mr. Krabs' office. This scene makes it look like SpongeBob is trying not to work, but Mr. Krabs is yelling at him. I wanted a few more design elements in this scene, so I designed a few. I printed these barrel seats that match the one the cockroach is sitting on. I paint this in this reddish brown acrylic paint named Burnt Sienna. Then paint the bands around the barrel in this blue color. I also wanted a few dining tables in this restaurant, so I designed some to match the ones from the show. I paint the tops of the table yellow. Paint the bottom of the table in gray. Then paint the edges and the spokes around the table red. I punch out a few circles from blue construction paper and glue them to the center of the tops of the table. These additional pieces make this restaurant feel complete.
Lastly, I designed a bunch of Krabby Patties that match the one cockroach is eating. It's made of two yellow buns, one brown patty, and one thin sheet of lettuce. I designed all of these as separate pieces so they were easier to paint. Assembly just means stacking them together with a bit of glue. Once the glue is dry, you can put them on the tables. I saved a few patties to go on the grill. This restaurant looks so lively and colorful with our characters in their spots. For the bathroom, I'm using this toilet that I showed you how to make in a previous video. Last but not least, we need some flags to finish the roof of our restaurants. Someone was kind enough to design these flags and put them online, so I linked that down below. I print them out and cover them in clear laminates. Cut them out and glue them to the front of the roof. And that's it. Our Krusty Krab is all complete. This project is a bit different from my usual realistic miniatures, but I had so much fun putting it together. The bright colors and bold lines create such a cheerful scene. And I love that the lid closes to keep any dust away, but opens to reveal all the fun details inside. I hope you learned something new today and are inspired to create scenes from your favorite childhood shows. I'll see you next time. Bye.